Hello, this is the next part of um, mountain building. So in the previous part of lecture, we had talked about how the angle of subduction is gonna have a profound effect on where mountains form and the processes by which mountains form on land. In the, this video, we're gonna explore the concept of um, what is on the other side of the downgoing slab? And I'll get you some graphics for that in a moment. moment. And we're going to see that what that slab takes down with it also has a very important effect on what kind of mountains you're going to get on your uh, continent. I know that as the mountains are red, the function of the trench is going to take time to set up. Elder slab start to flatten out. Next thing we'll see. So when the Meadowshore Ridge finally collides with the subduction zone, what'll happen is the uh, far side of the Meadowshore Ridge will kind of glue itself to the overriding plate. Meanwhile, the uh, slab that was the piece of uh, lithosphere that was subducting will continue to go down and disappear, like this piece right over here. But then there's this little gap. What happens to this little gap? Oh, that's where life gets interesting. You start to get warm asthenosphere filling in this gap, and that can lead to a little volcanism on land, um, as we saw in California about 20 to 30 million years ago, or, uh, including the formation of things like Calvary Hill, and some of the volcano, volcanic features you see just across the border in Mexico are also created by this process. So now I've described a couple different ways that various bits of continental and island arc material can get attached to a piece of oceanic lithosphere and get towed into the subduction zone with them. As I'm about to show you. And so suturing during the subduction of Mid-Ocean Ridge is one way you can get either an island arc or a sliver of continent um, or something of that nature glued onto your uh, subducting plate and get towed toward another larger continent. And so what you'll see is something called an accreted terrain, a little sliver of continental material that got towed into the subduction zone. And because that continental material does not want to sink, it's going to collide horizontally. You're going to get thickening and mountain building and uh, get make your continent a little bit larger all at the same time. Now perhaps the best place to see this is actually most of the uh, western U.S. Um, this is a mountain range in British Columbia. Much of the mountain ranges of British Columbia west of the Rockies are comprised primarily of accreted terrains that were towed over there by various subduction zones. You also see a number of accreted trains in California and just about every all up and down the uh, western part of North America, you see little blocks of continental crust that got peeled off and formed elsewhere and glued onto here by the subduction process. Often when the island arc uh, subducts, you get things like um, you get another subduction zone will pop up right behind it. Find it so. This way, you can get slab upon slab upon slab and sliver upon sliver of accreted terrain. Now, sometimes you also get, um, sometimes you have something a little more substantial. Sometimes you have an entire continent being towed into an island arc, in which case you're going to get something a little bit more substantial. This is how we get the Alps. One piece of continent is towed into a uh, larger, into another continent. Um, so common misconception people have about this, a lot of people think, ah, Italy is subducting into uh, Germany. Nope, actually it turns out uh, Germany and Northern Europe are subduct were, were subducting under Italy. And this is how we got the Alps. Now, if you have a very large block of continental crust that gets dragged down this another, with another large block of continental crust, 
you're going to get a lot of reverse faults. Everything's going to be at low angle, and you're going to get, boom, the Himalaya. Tallest mountain range in the world. This is a subduction zone dragging a piece of continental crust into another piece of continental crust. The two thicken through reverse faulting, and you get super tall mountain ranges. There we go. There we go. So we have Eurasia, colliding, India colliding with Eurasia, creating a uh, uplifted mountain block. Now, eventually, you have a very thick piece of crust. This is going to support trap heat at its base, and it's going to become gravitationally unstable. And in the case of California, remember that subducting slab where we had that big window of uh, where there was no longer a big cold piece of lithosphere going down beneath it? When you lost the big cold piece of lithosphere, you had a lot more heat flowing in. You started getting what are called fault block mountains. This one here is uh, Mount Whitney, the highest point in uh, the state. And uh, the lower end, highest point in the U.S. outside of uh, Alaska and Hawaii. And so in this case, your crust is actually thinning, but because there's more heat flow, your crust is lighter and you're lighter. And so it's literally rising up from buoyancy. What you're looking at right here is a false, is a false scarp here. This, by the way, is not the Sierras. The Sierras are over off at the uh, right side here. Mount Whitney's probably somewhere in the uh, mist on this one. This is White Mountain, the third highest peak in California, also for over 14,000 feet, a lot easier to walk up, which is why I took that picture, is because I'm... Mm -hmm. And you can really see this sort of geometry here that looks a lot like these uh, trapezoid-shaped mountains here. Um, this is a fault block range being tilted upwards. It slopes a bit more gently to the east side here. This one slopes, a, this here is slope much more gently to the west side. On the other side of the Owens Valley, there's a prominent fault. Now, as you might imagine, when you have uh, this much heat flow, you're probably also getting more volcanism at the surface. And if you explore the Owens Valley, you see volcanism everywhere. Now, it's slowly happening here, and also happening in Himalaya, is that as you trap more heat at the base of the crust, the base of the crust is getting warmer and warmer. As it gets warmer and warmer, it starts to flow in a ductile fashion away from that um, thick region. And as it flows, duct, the base of the crust flows ductilely away, your mountain range, especially the heart of the mountain range, starts to collapse. Um, the place we see this um, having happened somewhat recently is a good chunk of West Antarctica, which is now a basin and a range province, much like um, Nevada, but at one point was a much higher mountain range. The mountain ranges are now getting further and further by this process. Now, the other thing that wears down mountains is erosion. The thing about erosion, though, is that, um, yes, you can erode stuff, but when you have a very thick block crust, all that erosion is going to do is remove the topmost layer. And because you still have thick crust underneath, it's going to sort of bob upward like a cork. It's like putting a cork in a glass of water and then shaving off the top of the cork. That cork is going to continue to rise. So mountain ranges like the Appalachians and other mountain ranges that really haven't had any major tectonic collision in a very long freaking time can continue to maintain somewhat high elevations, sometimes hundreds of millions of years after the last tectonic event shaped them, just because those tectonic events preserve some exceptionally thick crust that's going to continue to bob upward and expose new, deeper formed material at the surface. Speaking of Appalachians, let's take a look at how they formed. I'm going to take a little tour of this, and then that'll wrap up our mountain building lecture for uh, this session. So that... Um, 550 million years ago, we had an ocean opening up that was not the Atlantic. This is actually something known as the Iapetus Ocean. Um, you can see there's uh, this is probably a piece of something or other that got rifted through back arc processes. And as it got... Hmm. And the ocean continued to grow, this little sliver that rift away. 
became an island arc, North America starts subducting under this island arc, bringing the island arc closer and closer. So finally, this island arc collides with North America, creating the Taconic Orogeny. Um, you see this all up and down, basically, eastern New York State. In fact, you can kind of see it right here in this picture. Taconic Orogeny, uh, with the continued compression and thickening, starts to get a substantial mountain range. This is kind of the uh, birth of the ancestral Appalachian. So a good chunk of the East Coast, just like the West Coast, is accreted terrains. It's just that the terrains on the East Coast accreted a lot earlier. Whereas the West Coast, you don't see a whole lot happening. In fact, 420 million years ago, the West Coast is basically a giant uh, passive margin with uh, little canyons cutting through it. Now, as you get deeper and deeper, um, we get a couple more collisions, and uh, eventually we get the uh, get a couple more accreted trains, and these accreted trains lead to the Acadian orogeny. So, if you've ever been to Arcadia National Park, you've probably seen slivers of this. Um, in fact, a good chunk of the regional metamorphism in what is now New England occurred um, during this event. Now, looking off to the southeast, you can see, uh oh, here's Africa. It's coming for us. Boom. Mountains continue to rise. Subduction continues to grow and then place more new crust. This is perhaps one of the reasons that New Hampshire is the granite state. So finally, Africa is about to collide. Start to see these mountain ranges rise up and boom! Alleghenian. Pennsylvania becomes very high mountains and we have mountain ranges higher than the Himalaya up and down what would become the eastern U.S. Um, now, at this point, the eastern U.S. is not the east coast. It is actually the center of a large continent, just like the Himalaya, are kind of at the heart of Eurasia at this point. Eventually, um, this collisional force subsides. We start to get some basin range mountain formation. We get some plateau collapse. We see the mountains start to spread away. You get a nascent, you get a little bit of fault block mountain building around here. You start to see the beginnings of a rift opening up. This rift takes a long freaking time to open up, but over little bits of time it starts to resemble the African Rift Valley. This is also probably around the time we start seeing um, lavas um, erupt in what would become New England and New York. I remember there was a mountain in western New England called Mount Tom that was a volcanic peak. Probably starting some of the magmas start to form for this this time. Maybe a little bit later. And during the Triassic we also see these shallow seas. Um, this is probably where I saw dinosaur tracks growing up. So finally at about 195 million years ago Pangaea starts to finally break apart. This rifting at first is very slow, but then when you finally get that ocean crust opening in the uh, late Triassic, early Jurassic, it grows really rapidly. And then, whereas we saw basically for about 100 million years, this rift did absolutely nothing. Once we got the rift going, absolutely, wow, really starts trucking. This rift's going to continue to grow, grow, grow. But meanwhile, now though, the action shifted to the West Coast. So we've seen a number of these accreted terrains add themselves to the west coast. This is going to continue to grow larger and larger. Um, we see the flattening of subduction. We see at this point there's a large embayment in what would become uh, the greater San Diego region. Subduction continues to flatten out. Then look out. We have a mid-ocean ridge approaching us. Uh-oh. The mid-ocean ridge subducts. We have, a, by the way, at this point, we had a river system flowing from through southwestern U.S. And the far side of this uh, mid-ocean ridge drags a good chunk of uh, what would become the Channel Islands and Santa Barbara with it. These all rotate um, clockwise 130 degrees. And uh, the Gulf of California starts to open up in this time. And then we have an ice age, and we are looking at now. This concludes the mountain building segment of today's lecture. Thank you very much.